Up until this point in your mathematical careers, it is likely that you've put the majority of your energy and focus into studying numbers. How to understand them, represent them, operate on them, manipulate them, solve for them, and so on. This is fantastic, but mathematics is so much more than just numbers. And so today we'll take our first step into the broader universe of maths and introduce you to a new mathematical object called a set. In today's video, we'll focus on introducing a set, what it is, how it's defined, and then in the upcoming series of videos, we'll work towards learning how we can understand them more, represent them, operate on them, manipulate them, and so on. There are many ways in which our study of set theory will be similar to our study of numbers, but also many ways in which it will be unique, including some stuff that can get pretty exciting. But let's begin. To get us started, I'd like to ask you a quick warm-up question. This may seem like it has nothing to do with math at first, and that's okay, but I promise to bring it around by the end. I've placed a poll in the cards in the top right corner of the video. Take a second, pause if you need to, and vote yes or no to the question, is chess a sport? And then maybe think a little bit about why you're answering the way you're answering, as in, what is determining whether or not chess belongs to this category? Now, I went and surveyed a bunch of people on this same question in advance and also included things like dance, poker, NASCAR, math, among other things, wondering if people consider those sports as well. When we look at the data, we see that the results are largely mixed. Now, it seems that we're in 100% agreement that football and distance running are sports, but even something like baseball was only considered a sport by 97% of the people surveyed. And then things like Dance, cheerleading, ribbon twirling, and as we go down the list, are even less so. For chess, only 18.4% of people said it was a sport. It's interesting to me that we can't seem to come to a definitive agreement whether most of these things belong to the category of sports or not. You would think at least, I mean, I would think at least, that the question is relatively straightforward, but it appears otherwise. Now. To be clear, it's not specifically whether or not dance should be considered a sport or whether chess should be considered a sport that I'm really concerned with here. Though, it's an interesting question, one worth asking. I'm fascinated specifically with why 18.4% say chess is versus 81.6% say that it isn't. As in, why are we not able to determine this more clearly? Why is there so much disagreement? When we start to look at the reasoning behind the decisions that were made, I think there's something important occurring that can help us understand why this is happening, and also help us understand some mathematical concepts, which will be coming soon. People are using a wide variety of different criteria to make their decision. Some say it has to require physical activity, others say it's a sport if it's competitive and has an objective outcome, but these aren't always consistent with each other. We're unable to determine what constitutes a sport because we literally don't agree on how a sport should even be defined. Perhaps if we were in agreement on the definition, the results would be more consistent and we'd possibly be able to more clearly determine whether or not chess or dance or math belong to the category of sports. In other words, we need sport to be well-defined. This of course is where the math comes in. In mathematics, we say something is well-defined if every interpretation of its definition is equivalent. There is no ambiguity, like we had in the case of sports. For example, the function f of x equal to 3 times x is well-defined because if I feed in an input of 3, there is no ambiguity that that function will return 9, right? 3 times 3 is 9, and so this is well-defined. It's as unambiguous as it gets. And that unambiguity, as it happens, is exactly what we need when we make a set. That is because a set is a well-defined collection of objects. In other words, with a set, we don't run into the problem that we had when determining sports. If you make a set, everyone would have to agree on what items belong to it or don't belong to it. So in other words, a set is a collection, which will either be based on a specific list or a clear objective criteria that allows us to say for certain whether an object belongs to the collection or not. For example, we can define a set based on the criteria that the item being considered is a day of the week. So this would include items like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, but not include things like Labor Day, or Christmas, or June 16th. 
we could define a set of NFL quarterbacks, which would include athletes like Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, but exclude athletes like Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, and Michael Phelps. We could even define a set of Pokemon, which would include Pikachu and Charizard and Totodile, a personal favorite of mine, but would exclude other characters like Sonic and Mario and Pac-Man. And this is one of the things that I really appreciated about the responses that were given in the survey. Most people, at least for themselves, were attempting to consider a sport in this way. We're attempting to consider a sport as a set, to make it well-defined, to give some clear single objective criteria to evaluate each item on. Perhaps you were too. Things like an Olympic event clearly draw a line between ribbon twirling being included and chess being excluded, or competition with an objective outcome clearly draws a line between NASCAR being included and dance being excluded. Even though these criteria weren't all the same, this is great because so many of you are already thinking like mathematicians. But again, a set is a collection where we can definitively determine whether or not some object belongs to it or not. So sports, for instance, at least without defining a clearer criteria, was not an example of a set here. Now, one common way to identify what is not a set is when a criteria is based on something subjective rather than something that is objective, most notably when it's based on an opinion. For example, I might try to define a collection of the best musicians, but best music is an opinion, it's subjective in nature. You might love Katy Perry and Taylor Swift, for example, and say they're the best musicians, but I'm not really a fan, and personally I prefer Miles Davis and John Coltrane. Our interpretations of best musicians are not equivalent, and so this would not be a well-defined criteria, and thus would not be a set. Now, you would have a set if we could reform this criteria a little bit to make it more objective. So let's say, for instance, instead of best musicians, we said the musicians with albums that have sold more than 40 million copies. Now this would be a set, right? Number of sales is something that can be measured and determined objectively. It is clear that Michael Jackson's Thriller does belong to this list, but Taylor Swift's 1989 does not, not even in her wildest dreams. All right, you know what? I'm sorry about that. That was pretty bad. The point is, though, this is well defined. Album sold is objective and measurable versus best musicians is an opinion. And so that's what makes this a set in this case. Now, there's a lot more to discuss when it comes to sets, but this is where we'll leave it for this one. A well defined collection of objects listed or determined by an objective criteria. It might not seem like a lot for now. This is our first step into a whole new world of mathematics. Numbers aren't the main object of our attention anymore. We have something new and exciting, and with that comes so many new avenues to explore. I hope you found this interesting, helpful, or entertaining, and I look forward to having you join us as we continue to explore those avenues and the world of set theory in the upcoming series of videos. There's a lot more cool stuff to come, and I'm excited for us to dive into it together. Anyway, if you do have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.